do women look younger in Copenhagen? Ask Hannah Helmer, a beautiful housewife with two children. Hannah is 32, yet she has a younger look. Why? In this video, I'm going to talk about the science behind why people look so much younger today than they did in previous generations. Are we really getting better at taking care of ourselves or is there something else going on? Hello lovelies, my name is Laura and in this video I want to talk about a topic that's been on my mind a lot lately. Why do people look so much younger today? You may have seen all the celebrities out there who seem to defy time, but what most people don't know is that they're using a secret weapon to keep themselves looking young. And that's what I'm going to show you in today's video. So in this video I'm going to explore the science behind why people are looking younger and try to answer the question once and for all. Have you ever stared in awe at a photograph of the past only to be perplexed by the vast difference between its subject's age and their appearance? Like the famous photo from the Great Depression when that lady is only in her early 30s. Could it really be that someone years before your time aged faster than yourself with just mere photographs as proof? As we observe, these mysterious family members of ours long gone through their youth, we can't help but wonder, why do they look like full-blown adults when they're still in their late teens and early 20s? Fortunately though, there are some explanations available to satisfy this curiosity. The prevailing belief appears to be that 30 is past its prime. On day 365 of being 29, at the stroke of midnight, you morph into an elder crone from a Disney movie. Obviously, reality differs from this. What is this school of thought about then? Do we really appear younger now or has everyone just forgotten what a 30 year old looks like today? And there definitely has been an increase of tweaking. Social media, in particular filters and editing applications and advances in the beauty sector could be to blame. It has become harder to determine someone's age and why. The frequency of rejuvenating tweakments has increased. Consider the recently introduced thread lift, which achieves similar results to facelifts, nose jobs, and lip fillers without the recovery time or TikTok's fascination with forehead fillers. All of these procedures, along with numerous others, have come about as a result of the so-called Zoom boom, in which video chats made during various lockdowns accentuated many people's anxieties such as wrinkles, pigmentation, and fine lines. Most people who frequently get injectables at a younger age seem about 10 years younger than their real age as a result of medical grade skincare and injectables. Women have always been assessed on their appearance and how they age, which can cause insecurities. However, the accessibility and normalization of anti-aging aesthetic treatments, especially through social media, has had a significant negative impact on the benchmark of what a woman in her 30s should look like. Aesthetic medicine can have a profoundly positive impact on self-esteem and self-confidence. And it's definitely true, I work in medical aesthetics and people that are coming in now to the clinic are as young as 20 years old, even 19, getting Botox. And there's also a theory how if you get too much filler in your face, you can actually look older than you are. So you can go too far. Recently, I've noticed something far more subtly troubling than these things. Young ladies, often very young women, with suspiciously plump lips, hyperdefined cheekbones, and skin that seems airbrushed like filtered selfies come to life. And I find too, when everyone gets this done, everyone kind of looks the same, like a weird puffed up clone of each other. And then no one is unique anymore, which is kind of disappointing. I feel like in the past, a lot more people had more unique looks and everyone has kind of morphed themselves into looking like a Kardashian. However, these days, at least within a specific demographic, 
a minor adjustment is equivalent to a squandered chance. Dermatologist Dennis Gross, MD of New York City, claims that ladies just out of college have started to show up with a laundry list. These cheekbones are what they seek, they desire the lips, which chin in today's age is an instant satisfaction, he claims. You don't have to accomplish everything at once. And it's true, it's easy to have body dysmorphia when you're constantly getting things and then you're noticing things on your face and you just wanna keep going and going and then you kind of lose sight. Do these toxins and fillers make young ladies look years older as opposed to what their users hope? The long-term strategy for a lady who began enhancing her appearance in her 20s. However, will she be useful in her 40s and beyond? What presumptions do you have about women who have had work done? Think about it. Even if you can't place it, and even if the art is excellent, the brain generally classifies them as older which is what young patients fear the most. And Dr. Dennis claims that rather than appear even a little older, these clients would rather look like techno humans with no shadows on their faces, and people would rather appear odd than old. And I guess that is definitely what Madonna is going for. I mean, she doesn't actually look old, but... I mean, to be honest, I'd rather just see her be a little bit more graceful because now she just looks a little terrifying in my opinion. It's just extreme. I feel like she's had too much filler. Even a very well-documented single family cannot and should not be held responsible for such a significant cultural transformation. The Kardashian-Jenners, though, were mentioned by practically every expert I spoke to with regarding the filler up period. With her 60 plus million Instagram followers, Kylie Jenner, whose alien beauty might pass for anyone between the ages of 16 and 34, is likely the most influential shapeshifter of all. The biggest misunderstanding about Jenner, according to the reality star, is probably that I'm just incredibly fake and that around 16 or 17, I got my complete face reconstructed. She stated in her interview with Paper Magazine, and I mean, that is, is essentially true. If you look at before photos of her, she looks like a completely different person. And I actually thought she was older than, I think she might be in her early 20s now, but it's so hard to tell because her face is so filled. If you look at the photos taken since 2010, there's been an amazing transformation despite affluence, puberty, and contouring makeup. Her famed lips are unimportant. Her charming cinnamon colored freckles, slight laugh lines and the typical hollows under her eyes are all gone. And next we have the Instagram effect. Apps for sharing videos and photos may alter how we view aging. The extreme editing culture on social media has put pressure on patients and certain practitioners to produce false and dramatic anti-aging outcomes. The distinction between a virtual life and physical reality is very literally blurred by editing tools and filters. Age perception must take into account the fact that we spend more and more of our time online. When compared to Instagram and Zoom, TikTok has been shown to automatically apply filters and alter face contours, whether you want it to or not. Additionally, it has been claimed that some smartphone cameras automatically airbrush your skin. We are aware that filtered images might harm one's mental state and sense of self, and tech industry leaders have taken this into account when developing design guidelines for their products. Now more than ever, it's possible to visualize how we could appear if the completely natural symptoms of aging were removed from our features. These technological advancements in some respects give the impression that we have forgotten how we really look. Or maybe the problem is that it establishes an unattainable ideal for aging. It makes sense that many of us feel divorced from reality and are unsure of what getting older actually looks like if every shot has been altered, distorted, or filtered without our knowledge. Add to it the multiple lockdowns during which we mostly relied on FaceTime and Zoom. Do we really know what someone our age looks like until we actually see them? And there have been many advances in skincare. The rise in popularity of sunscreen and other dermatological treatments, as well as the widespread use of orthodontics and dental care, were significant variables that affected differences in perceived aging between generations. Even if you look 
look at movies in the 80s and 90s, you know actors and actresses, their teeth are a lot different than film nowadays. Everyone has pearly white teeth, but back then you saw a lot of yellow teeth, crooked, it just looked different. Of course, there's also a lot to be said for the dramatic advancements in healthcare, including universal coverage in many nations, higher living standards, and more understanding of nutrition. Every new generation is overwhelmed with a variety of ways to maintain their health and youthful appearance, as well as scientific studies that offer the proof required to make such judgments. And it's true nowadays, like it's people don't smoke as much. Like back in the day, like even in the 70s up into the 80s, I remember when I was a kid going to restaurants and there'd still be like a smoking and non-smoking section and just people smoked more back then. And now they don't, so that's one thing too. By 2030, it is anticipated that the worldwide anti-aging market would be worth a staggering $306 billion. Being young looking is big business. Although there have been moves to ban the term anti-aging, for distorting a completely normal sensation, this type of skincare is more well-liked than ever. Recently, number seven's age-defying retinol raced off the shelves and firms are now creating skincare products with clever chemicals like epidermal growth factors that imitate Botox. Even young folks have been said to be considering how to delay the onset of aging and how to avoid pigmentation, lines, and wrinkles. Teenagers are establishing skincare routines on TikTok that emphasize the use of anti-aging products like acids and antioxidants like vitamin C before they perceive any signs of aging. Great skincare is now more affordable than ever before thanks to companies like The Ordinary. It's clear that many of us are delaying the signs of aging given the surge in aesthetic preventative procedures. So maybe we do appear a little younger than previous generations. Our obsession with using SPF every day, not just during the summer, to prevent premature aging brought on by UV light, pollution, and other environmental factors has definitely helped people maintain a more youthful appearance. We also tend to take care of our skin condition with safe tanning practices and other lifestyle measures. More people are aware of the negative effects of sun exposure, using sunbeds, smoking, and consuming alcohol. Patients are becoming more proactive, understanding that prevention is preferable to treatment. The most common methods for slowing down the aging process is having a healthy lifestyle and a little tweaks like baby Botox. Your lifestyle, availability to therapies, but notably hormones and genetic factors that we cannot control may have an impact on how your skin looks. How does someone of any age look? Everyone is unique. And why is there an aim to appear younger? And over time, this will have self-esteem issues. It will affect our self-esteem if we are taught repeatedly that looking 29 and under is the ideal. On TikTok, this is already taking place. A troubling trend is emerging where women are ostracized for their appearance. It's interesting how many of these remarks come from other females. Aging has evolved into other techniques used to degenerate women online since appearing elderly is viewed as a bad thing. Women are assessed regardless of whether they accept aging, which can be very frustrating. Madonna's Instagram posts include a ton of comments which support this. One Instagram user said, you don't look like the way you used to. Why are you afraid to age? And another added, you would be much prettier if you accepted your wrinkles and your age. Your fake face doesn't suit you well. Pressure comes from many directions, whether it's being told again and again that looking younger than 30 is preferable or receiving criticism that you need work done. So, I mean, I guess it works both ways, but I feel like there still is a way if you do want to get work done to get it done well. I mean, look at JLo. I mean, she obviously probably gets Botox and fillers, but the way it's done is very tastefully. What exactly is so terrifying about appearing over 30? Ageism, sadly, is commonplace in our culture. The truth is that there has been a paradigm shift 
and how people perceive what a woman should look like as she ages as a result of easily accessible aesthetic procedures that prevent wrinkles, facial drooping, and loss of definition. Women give birth to kids, and another reason why people are looking younger today than in the past is women give birth to kids at a later age nowadays. Not just how we think about aging has changed, a 50-year-old person was regarded as elderly 150 to 200 years ago, but middle age is now used to describe someone who is 50. Have you ever observed that some people around the age of 30 already have gray hair and minor wrinkles while others still appear to be young children? It's all due to the fact that each person has a unique biological clock that hardly ever corresponds with their actual age. American researchers have concluded that biological aging has been occurring more slowly recently, which is why succeeding generations continue to seem younger looking for longer. Recent research has shown that women actually begin to age more quickly after childbirth. The reason isn't just because of the constant exhaustion and stress that come with raising children and planning for their future throughout the first few months, it turns out that a woman's body undergoes cellular alterations after giving birth. And women are taking on more these days than in the past. They make an effort to devote more time to their job and business before starting a family. Because of this, visible indicators of aging start to show considerably later. The state of our teeth and the shape of our faces are directly related. Our teeth and jaw supports our cheeks and lips. Thus, if you have missing or damaged teeth, they physically ruin the shape of your face, like you can have almost a sunken face. Naturally, as we age, our cheeks drop and our lips thin. These are changes that can only be altered through plastic surgery. However, a minor model occlusion might make it appear much worse. Because of this, going to the dentist on a regular basis truly does enable us to have a lovely face shape for longer. And it is true in the past, again, people People would have missing teeth, like the dental work was a lot different. A lot of people would die from rotting teeth in the past or just had to get them pulled because there wasn't even dentures. With the level of dentistry available now, you may correct any issues that even our parents had to live with. Additionally, because medicine has approved and specialists have received better training, dental work outcomes now last considerably longer. And if you even think about like crest white strips and all these teeth whitening things that weren't even available to most people in the mainstream even 20 or 25 years ago. Like I remember when Crest White Strips first came out, I don't know what people were using before that. Maybe you could only get your teeth whitened in the dentist and it was really expensive. So if you have yellow teeth, it actually ages you. So people have access to these things now. Young people also select careers nowadays that do for the most part that aren't as physical or outdoors. Like people had more laborious jobs in the past where they're working out in the sun more and obviously it depends where you live in the world, but I think it's just different nowadays. A lot of people are spending more time indoor in offices. And now let's look at the fashion and why the way people used to dress back in the day would age them versus how people dress nowadays. When people look back in time, they see people dressed in outdated fashions that have long been associated with older people. 50 year olds in the past would dress more like a grandma, whereas now middle-aged people are wearing a lot of the same fashion trends as younger people. A lot of people in the past got stuck in their prime and were a decade behind in fashion trends because they kept wearing what was in style in their youth. And they would wear the same trends into their 50s and even 60s. I remember my cousin was telling me that in the 80s, her dad was still wearing bell bottoms and all the 70s stuff, so he was like a decade behind, but I just feel like this isn't as common nowadays. It was formerly a prevalent belief that fashion trends reoccur every two decades. In the previous industry, 20 years was sufficient for a pattern to become famous, fade away long enough to be forgotten, and then resurface with a contemporary twist. While the 20-year-old cycle is still true in some ways, the emergence of cutting-edge technologies and social media has significantly significantly shorten the current trend cycle. A variety of styles can be popular at the same time 
and trends from every decade appear at what seem to be random times. The speed to market has been increased by design and merchandising technologies and social media has made it possible for trends to come and go quicker. And I think that's part of the reason why now too, with fast fashion and technology, people are like getting a hold of trends way quicker. So like the people can see what's going on in the big cities and in Europe, and then it just comes to them faster. And today's fashion trends come from a wide variety of sources, including runways, textile producers, social media, music, and more. Designers predict their emergence and disappearance as do experts from outside that like stylists and trend analysis. A trend could become popular from one factor and then lose appeal for another. Although trends can be an unpredictable phenomena, some behaviors never change. In fact, a trend goes through five stages in its life cycle. At first, a fashion trend is introduced. When a new style is launched, the first phase of a trend's life cycle begins. This may take the form of a cloth color pattern or silhouette. And this inception often occurs during fashion week. And the next Next cycle is the rise of a fashion trend. The trend's ascent to popularity represents the second stage of its life cycle, during which a style changes from being merely new to trendy. These days, influencers and celebrities frequently contribute to popularization of a style through either paid advertising or natural advertising on social media. In this type of popularization, stylists and media strategists frequently play a significant role by predicting what influencers will wear. And the next stage is the life cycle peak. The peak stage is when a trend achieves the pinnacle of its appeal to the general public. The trend is now carried by a majority of large retailers and made available to all consumer types frequently at lower prices than during the rise stage. As a result, the majority of luxury labels no longer carry the trend. Because the duration of a trend's peak is so uncertain, this point in its life cycle is unusual. And I feel like in the past, older people would get the trends so far far later, almost a decade versus now. And so they'd almost get the decline of the trend. And this is the next stage when trends must decline in connection with that, because it's just beyond the thin border of market oversaturation. The fall stage immediately follows the peak stage because consumers often get bored of seeing a trend too much or feel that it's becoming too mainstream. A trend's extensive appeal is frequently also its downfall. And this is the last phase of the fashion cycle and this stage marks the end of a trend's life cycle is when a fashion is universally seen as being out of style. Consumers who like the peak trend recently go to a new peak trend and discard the old ones. Now let's talk about the importance of biological age. If it wasn't evidence enough that people actually did look older in the past, researchers also carried out a fascinating study in 2018 that evaluated the biological biological ages of around 1,000 people, all of whom were 38 years old. They use a variety of physiological indicators, including metabolism and blood pressure, to calculate each participant's biological age, and the majority of them fell within the range of what would be anticipated. Another study examined the relationship between biological and chronological ages in people between 1988 and 2010. Recent generations were discovered discovered to be biologically substantially younger than older ones. The biological age of younger generations may help to partially explain why they differ in appearance. De-aging is a visual effects method used in motion pictures, whether for film, television, or online streaming, an actor or actors will look younger, and this can be used during flashback scenes. This is frequently done by digitally altering the image of the person by applying overlays or touch-ups using computer-generated imagery. Even de-aged digital actors will sometimes be created by some media from scratch or using a combination of stand-ins and CGI. And Harrison Ford was able back to how he appeared during the release of the first three Indiana Jones movies for the opening sequence, which features a World War II flashback of Indiana Jones fighting in 1944. 
By doing this, Ford was able to recreate the impression that the footage was shot in the 1980s. In order to accomplish this industrial light and magic, search through old film of Harrison Ford when he was younger and matched it with recently shot footage, as well as providing Ford with the original jacket he wore in Raiders of the Lost Ark. Ford was somewhat spooked by the outcome, but nonetheless pleased by its realism. He insisted though that the technology didn't make him miss his youth. And I am excited to see this. I'm really curious. Um, I'm not sure when this movie's coming out, but I think it's pretty soon. And CGI is even bringing actors back from the dead. After 40 years, Bruce Lee made an appearance in an advertisement and Audrey Hepburn was recreated for a chocolate advertisement. Even the singers Buddy Holly and Roy Orbison performed on tour last year in hologram form. A look at how CGI is being used to bring back Hollywood legends and what it means for the cultural legacies. And I feel like this is going into uncharted waters knowing that you could bring back a celebrity and have them star in a movie and they're not there to defend themselves. And I don't know why, I just have a suspicion this is gonna happen to Marilyn Monroe. Death is now only a gateway to a digital afterlife and it is no longer the final act in an actor's career. Film companies are now able to effectively recreate deceased celebrities or delebs and give them substantial roles thanks to computer generated imagery. Elvis Presley was originally intended Tended to play an army squad leader in Finding Jack, which would also have a crucial role for James Dean, who has been digitally revived. And Elvis's estate declined to accept this. And when Robin Williams passed away in 2014, he made sure that this would not happen to him, where they could use his likeness or image for profit until 2039. The document forbids using a hologram or digitally recreating him in a film or television scene, as has been done with many other famous people, including Elvis Presley, who appeared in Blade Runner 2049, and the late rapper Tupac, who made an appearance at a Coachella in 2012, 16 years after his passing. And one of Hollywood's most recognizable stars, James Dean from the 1950s, is the most recent in a long line of famous people who have been brought back from the grave. When James Dean died in a vehicle accident at the age of 24, 65 years later, in 2019, he was chosen to play the second lead in the movie Finding Jack, which was set in the early 1970s at the end of the Vietnam War. Since the early 1990s, it has been possible to use this technology, but because it was so expensive to do and so time consuming and complicated, it was only done sometimes for novelty's sake. As a result, US President JFK appeared briefly in Forrest Gump in 1994 using spliced film, and while Audrey Hepburn made a comeback in Galaxy Chocolate commercial in 2013, 20 years after her passing, and now I gotta see this chocolate commercial, and Bruce Lee was revived from the grave by Johnny Walker to advertise scotch, which caused tremendous outcry because Bruce Lee had abstained from alcohol his entire life. And we reach a point where voluntary suspension of disbelief acquires a whole new meaning since US state laws permit renowned persons to leave the rights to their image as a part of their states. Hollywood has forever been a mecca of staunch beauty standards, where only the youngest and most beautiful talent is cast in starring roles. But times are changing and Hollywood producers are increasingly turning to reverse aging technology to produce even more youthful and fresh looking stars without sacrificing the decades of experience and skill that Hollywood's veterans bring. Regardless of why people look so much younger today, Hollywood shows no sign of stopping its pursuit for ever more youthful casts, continuing to push boundaries of what we can achieve with makeup and effects. And Hollywood will be bringing us these effects for years to come. So eventually, maybe you won't even know if certain actors or actresses are dead and they'll just be a hologram of themselves. After exploring all the possible causes, we can finally draw a conclusion. It appears that people look younger today due to advances in diet and nutrition, as well as technology, a focus on skincare, better general healthcare, and access to cosmetic procedures. Without realizing it, modern day culture is slowly helping us to keep looking more youthful. 
What began as an illusion has quickly become our reality and quite possibly the new normal. The secret behind why people look so much younger today is most definitely out. And thanks for watching and let me know in the comments below um, what you think about aging and the idea of de-aging in Hollywood and the holograms. All right, see you soon. Bye.